I've travelled just shy of a thousand kilometres to what's almost the furthest point from my home in London in the UK, the Shetland Islands. These islands are Britain's most northerly outpost. What's incredible is they're closer to Norway than they are to Edinburgh. And this is the gateway to where I'm heading, the even more remote island of Fair Isle. I've still got to make the 43 kilometre flight over to the island, but there's never a guarantee of completing a journey this far north. There it is, Tommy's house, exactly as I remember. Timeless, a bit like the island. Okay. Tommy? Come in. <laughs> hey, hey. hey. Welcome back. You? Good, good. Can't believe it's been five years. I, I'm in the kitchen going, come in, come <laughs> in, because there's nobody docks. They just walk in on Oh, do around. they? You see, I'm, I'm all southern and try to be polite, I think is what it is. Nice to have you back. Thanks. Can I come in? Yeah. Thank absolutely. you very much. Earl Grey. Mm -hmm, very nice. Thank you. My favorite, too. So your hair's grown. Is that uh, five years of growth? No, I cut it a while ago. I stopped dyeing my beard. Uh, and I grew my hair long, yeah. And what, what other big changes have happened on the island? Well, there's been a lot of changes in the island. Um, we got 24-hour power now. Population now is about uh, 45. And it's a bit difficult because the way my guests come and go, like my last guests were in October last year. So I have the winter where I had no guests. And I was totally booked with my guest house all summer long. I had tons of bookings. So of course I spent all my money traveling and doing fun things. And then all of a sudden March came and no one could come. And uh, so that, that's been very tough. And there's no tourism anymore. So the whole island is suffering from tourism. Uh, you know, it's one of the, like every place, there's so many places that are so dependent on tourism. So uh, that's been really hard on the island. I mean, the people that make the hats, no one's coming to buy their knitwear. You know, uh, people that run guest houses, you know, it's, it's been very difficult for the whole island. The whole world has, has gone through some extraordinary times living on an island isolated, disconnected anyway, has its extra burden because an island like this entirely relies on tourism and transport links to the outside world. So as soon as those are cut, you can imagine how that would destroy an economy. And when there's only 40 people or so on an island, that will have a profound impact. So it's obviously been tough here. It'll be interesting to see what kind of effect that has had on Tommy, whether whether he's been able to, to ride it and, and utilize the landscape around him and his love of art. But I imagine it's been hard, really hard. At just two and a half kilometers wide, Fair Isle's rugged coastline is never far from sight. On my last visit, I got a chance to see its majestic cliffs as Tommy and I took to the sea to try to catch our dinner. All right, come on, fishies. One in the pan, one in the freezer. Maybe one for Ben. <laughs> Tommy might not mind the odd storm, but the weather can play havoc with transportation links to the island. On my last visit, thick fog meant a delay for the arrival of someone very special, Tommy's son, Henry. At 14, like other island kids his age, Henry went to boarding school on mainland Shetland. Someone got a haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice to 
Since his parents' divorce, Henry only saw his dad every third weekend. Did you spend lots of your childhood doing this, Henry? Yeah, I spent almost all my childhood after school coming down at low tide and hunting through rocks and finding fish. Do you ever say to your mum and dad, oh, please oh, take yeah. me to the big city? I wouldn't mind going there, but I would never want to live there. Why not? Because I love this small, friendly community where everyone knows everyone. I could see how much love this father and son had for each other. Half a decade on, a 19-year-old Henry is now at university. And thankfully, because of the improved communications on the island, it's easy for them to stay in regular contact. Hi, Henry. Look who's here. Hey, Henry. Hi. It's a bit strange to be chatting to you over the internet in Dundee, is it? Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Dundee University at the moment. Are you missing Fair Isle? Always, all the time. <laughs> good, yeah. Good I'm answer. Missing, I'm missing the cooking, I think. Are you missing your dad? Yes, and yeah, definitely that as well. <laughs> I'm wondering, do you worry about your dad over here? Totally, but you know, I think he's a little more safe with the whole thing that's going on right now to be able to chill out in Fair Isle and ha be able to go outside and just enjoy like the all the natural stuff, apart from when it's gonna be too windy to go outside. When do you think you'll get back out here? I'm hoping to get back for Christmas. I'd like to be back to get Christmas with family. We mustn't keep you from your study, because, of course, that's all you do at university, nothing else, just study, study, study. <laughs> yeah, right. Do good work. I miss you. Love you. Bye, Henry. Nice to chat. Bye, Bye. Bye Ben. Bye. Oh, that must be nice, Tommy. I bet you're missing him. Oh, so much. So much. There's, you know, it's everything. You must be proud of him. I'm so proud of him, yeah. You know... Love him. He's a good kid. It's been great to see my old friend again. However, there's no hiding that my return to Fair Isle has been tinged with some sadness. And yet, Tommy's determination to focus on that which makes him happy gives me hope that he'll be OK. Few things give him as much pleasure as capturing Fair Isle's landscape on camera or on canvas. And before I leave, Tommy insists I experience this joy for myself. This island is such an integral part of you and, and who you are. I'm wondering whether you can ever imagine not being here, whether you can ever imagine being somewhere else. You know, there's a, there's a lot of variables and life is pretty unsure right now what to do. So, I mean, I could really go on another adventure in life, but I'm not exactly sure where or when the opportunity will, will open itself. But, you know, as long as I stay open, it might happen. I'm painting your beautiful house here, but I'm wondering where home is. Oh, <laughs> tricky. <laughs> oh, this is home. I, d I don't think I'll say that this is my finest uh, work of art, but I was under pressure. I'm rather into my naive kind of folk art anyway. I think when I first visited five years ago or so, he, his accent was almost jarring with the landscape and the environment here. But five years on, he seems to fit seamlessly into this landscape and this lifestyle. Tommy is very much, in my mind, a Fair Islander and this is his home. Tommy, time to go already. Thank you so much. It's oh, been incredible to come back. You're always welcome here, Ben. I hope I come back, and I really hope that you find your direction in the next few years. Yeah. Go with your heart. I hope everyone works out what they're going to do in the next few years everywhere. Bye, Tommy. Safe travels. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>